To be able to reject societal expectations and make the mold fit you rather than fitting the mold takes real courage, and that's what Jamie Afro Arch's audition back in Series 5 of The X Factor managed to do. To pick a rock song to sing at a show like X Factor back when everyone stuck with chart toppers was a brave move indeed, and one that panned out for him spectacularly at his audition and the rest of the season. Even after being eliminated, it was clear that Jamie was meant to go places with his untapped potential. And yet, over a decade later, we barely hear his name now. Join us as we take a look at what really happened to Jamie Archer from the X Factor UK. Jamie from Putney, London had been interested in music since he'd been a young boy and throughout his life strived to make ends meet while still trying to realize his passion of becoming a musician by playing in bars whenever he got the opportunity. He even worked at a bar up until his audition and said that for years he had been playing pub gigs to audiences that completely ignored him. Auditioning at X Factor would allow him the exposure he so clearly deserved. But back in 2006, tragedy struck, and he almost passed away because of a horrifying throat bug. The doctors weren't even sure he'd make it, and he had to have an air tube inserted minutes before it would have completely closed over. He was so close to losing one of the most important parts of him, and yet he did not use that story to score sympathy at his audition. In fact, he specifically kept it under wraps, because he wanted to make it on the show through sole merit. So, when the time came for his audition, he did not hold back from giving it his all. Jamie Archer's audition is worth talking about for several reasons. One of those reasons is the fact that quite no one, not even Jamie himself, saw it as an opportunity or stepping stone to something bigger. If anything, Jamie was counting on not being selected as a contestant after seeing everyone auditioning before him pick something conventional and popular, which is an understandable fear looking back. After Jamie introduced the song he was going to sing, you couldn't help but note Simon Cowell's expression, one that would have made anyone less sure of themselves tremble where they stood on stage. But Simon Cowell has a little experience with being proven wrong by first-time auditionees. As for Jamie, as soon as he heard the music at the audition, you could tell he was automatically more confident. It was also one of the most memorable auditions on the show because Jamie just treated the audition like one of his gigs. At one point, he even pointed his mic at the audience behind the judges' panel like he was a concert performer. Being called a natural-born entertainer at your first performance on the show isn't a usual occurrence, but nor is having an entire crowd already accept you as a full-fledged singer within your own right, so we suppose Jamie Afro Archer just brings it out in the people at X Factor. Glowing with positive feedback and four yeses, Jamie returned to his friends and family to celebrate his spectacular win. His audition currently has over 61 million views on YouTube alone and is easily one of the most memorable auditions on the show. When he finally got through with his performance, it was a pleasant surprise for rock fans everywhere because he took a risk and it worked out for him. Not to mention, it gave the show an edge it hadn't really ever had before until that point and brought in more viewers who identified with Jamie's musical style and saw themselves in him. Throughout the rest of the season, this very fact would make it impossible for Jamie to feel comfortable on the show. In an interview a few years later, Jamie spoke about how his opinion was first asked when it came to the songs he'd be able to perform on stage. He said that he very excitedly gave them a list of new songs that were fairly different from the ones that the contestants would play at the time, but he was often rejected. Like at Heroes Week, week one of performances, he wanted to do Mr. Brightside, but was told he couldn't because it was too risky. He also felt that they might have been trying to push an image on him that isn't his own, something X Factor, and particularly Simon Cowell, has been accused of before to boost ratings. He claimed that he didn't want to participate in what he called a 70s jokey pastiche type thing X Factor wanted him to play into. All he wanted to do was introduce some of his music on the show, which was difficult because, according to him, all they wanted was bland music. Eventually, as we all know, the 34-year-old pub singer was voted out of the show after a sing-off with contestant Lloyd Daniels. After leaving the show, he realized that the show was not necessarily right for him. In fact, it may just have made him lose confidence in his abilities. When talking to the press association, Jamie talked about some of the reasons he felt that way. 
Talking about how X Factor wasn't perhaps the right show for him would become a constant theme after he was eliminated, and he always said something along the lines of how demoralizing it was to note that nobody there knew what to do with him. He kept thinking that it might have been him being difficult that was causing people to not give him the right songs. Not the most diplomatic person, Jamie Archer is incredibly honest in his interviews, and that may just be a leading factor in why you don't see his name plastered all across the internet now. As he said himself, he's more of a musician than a businessman, and he has made it incredibly clear, especially in his time right after X Factor, that he doesn't necessarily vibe with mainstream music. According to him, we never really see a lot of proper songs in the charts. Even so, he's put an end to the suggestion and rumors that he was on the verge of quitting the show anyway. Apparently, a lot had been taken out of context because he never wanted to quit, even after realizing that maybe this wasn't the right show for him. After all, they never gave him the songs that worked in his favor, so even though he was gutted about getting the lowest votes that week, he was glad to have been eliminated and off the show. He said that the show did not appropriately know how to present him to the public, but he was content with his journey and ready to move on. He also put to bed rumors that he might have been beefing with Simon Cowell on the show. According to Jamie, the disagreements were only over the songs he could perform, but outside that, he loves the guy. He even called him Cow and the Emperor throughout his run and believed the X Factor had given him that kickoff point to start his career and get on with it. And yet, when you think of successful X Factor contestants, Jamie Archer does not make the cut. After being on X Factor, Jamie went back to his pub gigs, but this time with a larger audience. And it could be that he belongs to a very niche group of musicians or that things just didn't pan out his way. But a lot of what Jamie has done after X Factor hasn't necessarily been noteworthy. It's not as though he hasn't made attempts to kick off his musical career, and in 2011, he announced his first solo tour. He talked about how excited he was to get his old band back together again. By 2011, the band he was in was called Archer, and he was performing with his brother to make the kind of music people would find joyful and exciting. He went on to tour with his brother as his drummer and Anthony Reed as lead guitarist. He explained the band's musical style as rock music with an element of dance, something you can nod your head along with to the rhythm. Around the same time, he competed in an ITV1 reality show and visited the Daisy Chain charity at Carfallo Farm in Norton, a charity that works with families of children with autism and related neurodivergent disorders. He delivered a fantastic show to everyone present there and made headlines for his energy at the event. He was also chosen as one of the lead vocalists on X Factor's charity single, You're Not Alone, which reached number one in the UK. And in 2012, towards the end of 2011, he was asked to write and record the official charity single for the Prince's Trust, UK City Riot's Appeal, which was released early 2012. And just like that, he was gone for a while, with no real explanation. Or at least, there is very little digital footprint available online to connect him to any big musical breakthroughs in his career. But in 2015, he uploaded a 40-second YouTube video talking about how he was back and how his fans should brace themselves for new music. He said that he'd explain his absence later on, and now seven years later, he still hasn't. Then in 2018, Jamie returned with a self-titled album. Understandably, his X Factor hype had sort of died down in the half decade he did not appear anywhere big or noticeable. In 2021, he released another album titled Unplugged, Uncovered, all with a flashy website to match, but it might as well have been named Unnoticed, because it didn't gain much traction outside his immediate fandom. All that said, he does seem to be garnering views in the thousands on his YouTube, and he does seem to be making music consistently. So, we still have our fingers crossed for his comeback. We can't wait to see what he does next.